Good morning, welcome to Takeover Tuesday. This is Chris, better known to you guys as Elite3D. Today I'll be taking over Chief Architect's Instagram account. I'm excited to share my over two decades of experience using the various Chief Architect products. Throughout the day, I'll be posting jobs I've created in Chief Architect. I'll also be taking questions, be sharing tips, tricks, and shortcuts that I use on a daily basis. And while I'm doing all of that, I'll be creating a house in real time for a real client to show my personal workflow. Everyone has an origin story. Mine begins in the mid to late 90s. I was doodling in class, and instead of getting in trouble, the teacher saw that I was pretty good. He recommended that when I get to high school, I take every drawing and draft in class offered. There was hand drafting, CAD CAM, design and drawing for production, and basic architecture. Not only did I love it, but it was clear that I had talent. So at this point, my mother purchased me a program, 3D Home Architect, then right after that, Home Designer. As I got better with Home Designer, I had to make the jump to Home Designer Pro. I started to get opportunities to create larger and vastly more complicated projects, and that's when I finally made the leap to Chief Architect Pro. I think one of the big things that separates me from other 3D visualizers is that my primary job is bringing the vision of others to life. This includes architects, engineers, landscapers, and interior designers. This is also what I love. It's a challenge. Someone has something in their head, and I have to sign full 3D models in Chief Architect. The very first thing I do when I receive a file from a design professional is go in and start to adjust some of the colors. These colors work great and are quite visible when you have a black background. I use the standard Chief Architect white background. Colors like yellow and cyan will practically disappear. So I will go in and individually change those to either be red or black. Colors are adjusted and ready for import into Chief Architect. Now that I've imported this into Chief, you can see that the color change to red makes a big difference. I can see everything really clear and red pops because it's the first color your eye sees. The next thing I do always is I change the layers. So I hit control A, which selects everything, control E, which opens, and I change the name. I go new and I go AA import. The reason I start everything with AA is because it's gonna be at the top of your layer manager. So later on, if I wanna toggle this layer on or off, I don't have to go searching through the whole layer manager. It's right at the top. The next thing that's critical to my personal workflow is to first save the project and second, start to go through and look at the dimensions. Chief Architect is great because you can actually assign real life dimensions and ceiling heights, floor heights, and the height of the floor above grade. So I check and see what the architect has provided and now I've got the exact parameters. Anything that's not here, I can dimension myself since the drawings are ready to scale. I have assigned the hotkey R for point to point dimensions. I hit the letter R and I can drag that and get the dimension of the floor thickness. And now I can get the dimension of the height above grade. I now have this basic massing from placing the walls in the exact location provided to me on the plan. The next step is to lay in the windows and doors. What's great about Chief Architect is you can set some default parameters. I know from the information provided that the top of the windows and the top of the doors on both floors are gonna be eight feet. I can go and set that by double clicking on the window and change this from 80 inches to 96 inches. And now every time I place the window, it'll be at the proper top height. You can now see I have multiple views open. This is really important to my workflow and one of my favorite parts about Chief Architect. I'm able to see multiple vantage points of the house. i am only been commissioned to do the front of this house. So I'm able to see from the 3D perspective that I have got all my windows and doors in place and I've got them aligned perfect with the elevation views provided. Next step is to work on the roof. You can see I've made a lot of progress on the house now that I have the roof on and I have my portico. I am jumping around because this was never meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, just more of my own personal workflow. If you wanna learn more about building roofs, Chief Architect has a fantastic library and they've got so many tutorials on how to do everything. So my next step is to apply standing seams. 
if you go to your material catalog, there are standing seam roofs and there's nothing wrong with that. The textures are great, but I personally like to build my own standing seams. So what I've done in a cross section elevation view is I've made my own standing seams and I'm going to do a copy multiple. For me, I've set it up as the shortcut or hotkey five. Once I hit five, I'm able to drag this across. And what that has done is that's given me the illusion of standing seams. Once I apply, I've now changed all the colors and added all the standing seams to my roof line. I'm on to my very last step, which is actually the front steps. I've saved this for last intentionally because I wanted to let people know who may be intimidated out there that even a novice can teach an expert. I had already been using the program for about 15 years at this point, five years ago. I was training a lovely young girl named Hunter and on her very first day, she taught me something. When I was drawing steps, Chief always draws those steps upwards. If you wanna draw down, you have to hit Alt and you can draw down. She discovered you can just right click and drag down and it draws down. It seems like such a simple thing, but it was something I didn't know. So anybody out there who's a new user, there are so many things to learn and it's really exciting to learn. So somebody asked a really great question, and that is, what are layers? I mentioned them before. So layers are really everything and anything in Chief Architect, from the walls, windows, doors, your roof lines, anything you draw. If you draw a line, it's on a layer, and you can change that layer. What I did was I came up with a small little demonstration house that has a bunch of stuff on it. So up top on the screen, it shows you different layer sets that are already pre-programmed. You can make your own, but here's the generic ones that it comes with, which are really helpful. So if I was to go to electric plan view, all that would be left are my walls, windows, doors, and just the electric. If I was to go to a roof plan, it gets rid of everything, my cabinets, my electric. It grays out the windows and doors because that's not what is important on this particular layer set. It's showing me the roof, what is important on this particular layer set. It's showing me the roof pitches. It's showing me the roof lines. And you can do the same with a kitchen and bath set. You can do it with a uh, just a dimensioned floor plan or the shell of a floor plan. So there's all different layer options. If you want to know what layer an object is on, you just double click that object and you would go to layer. This one's obvious, it's windows, but this is how you would figure out what layer it is on. If you want to open up your layer set manager, you can either hit the button right above tab or below escape, the tilde button, or you can go to the layer manager. And here's where you can see all the layers that are active and not active in Chief Architect. This is a job I'm really excited to share. This is a CAD file I received from an architect who I idolized for many years before I met. Now I am not only lucky to work with him, but call him a friend. This was designed by famous architect, Peter Cook. This is a typical house he would do, one of a kind estate. When you look at it, it seems very intimidating. It doesn't seem like it's something that could be built in chief architect. And I guess this is where 20 years of chief architect skills come in. Here's that job now in chief architect. This is something I'm extremely proud of. There's so many complicated details to build such a beautiful house like this. And to be able to do it in Chief Architect and have everything move and run smoothly, every roof line connect, every railing connect, and have no glitches is just something I'm really proud of. It definitely took all of my 20 years of experience to pull something like this off. It's currently a work in progress. It's not 100% complete, but I really wanted to share this project in particular for people who don't realize how strong of a program Chief Architect is. 
And this is just a one of a kind project. And I don't know that this could be built in any other software. I'm really excited to share this next project. This is a kitchen that I did for one of my favorite clients ever. And this has got to be my favorite kitchen I've ever done. I've been called out on Instagram by people saying there's no way this was created in Chief Architect. And it's simply because they don't know the capabilities Chief Architect has. So for everyone who doubted it was done in Chief Architect, here you go. This is the real-time ray tracing effect the new Chief Architect has. And everything was created in Chief Architect. This is using all of the extra catalogs for all the Wolf stove, the Sub-Zero refrigerator, all of the other catalog downloads. So this is one that I'm super proud of. And for everyone who doubted the ability of Chief Architect, here it is. I just wanted to thank Chief Architect for allowing me to take over today. It's been an honor and a blast. I also wanted to thank the Chief community on Instagram, people like House of Wilson, T3 True Designs, and my newest friend, Designs by Ebony. I also wanted to thank Ryan Kessner for letting me do his job in real time today. I wanted to thank Peter Cook for allowing me to share his work, and a few others who may never see this but are really important to my life. One person in particular who's provided me work for the last decade, Mark Anthony. Also, Stephen, Hunter, Tamana, Joe, Jeff, Liz, Noel, Jennifer, Nick, and Teresa.